very much. So there's no misunderstanding. So there's no misunderstanding. I was supposed to be the last speaker here, and the idea was, the time the other one spoke, you guys would be so knocked out that you wouldn't catch my mistakes. <laughs> you're wondering what I'm going to say next. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> when I w heard about this event, I was told it was going to be a solemn occasion. And with that in mind, I went to one of my friends in the building that we live in. She's a world-renowned educator. And she said, Oakley, why don't you address this crowd in Latin? It's a wonderful idea. So I started catching up on my Latin, which incidentally, I never did speak. But anyway, the following night, I was lying in bed, it just dawned on me, if I give a speech in Latin to two, almost 200 people, there's only a few of them would know what I was talking about. Am I correct? But anyway, that takes care of that. <laughs> I received a letter. Can you people hear me? Am I coming across? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I received a letter from the Latin school informing me to spend five minutes telling what the Latin school education has meant for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I never attended Latin school. <laughs> Sometime later, I received a verbal communication from a third party informing me to say why did I contribute to the Latin school. And I corrected that lady immediately. I said, we do not make contributions. We make investments. Okay? Well, what I was going to say next. <laughs> but you're probably thinking that I don't know Latin. <laughs> You're wrong. Amor. Translation I love. Amos. You love. That's all the Latin tonight. <laughs> but anyway, this is a wonderful, wonderful evening. And we're here, quite frankly, because of education. Think about it. That's why we're here. Now, the Latin School has approximately 264 students. This new building will permit this school to bring in 50 additional students. Just think about that. 50 additional future leaders. That's the key. Now, of those 264 students, there's only 18 from Covington. And, there's all, and one of those is from Park Hill. Now, if this don't freeze you, I don't know what will. It's a goddamn tragedy. It truly is. Our education system is, if it's not busted, it's bruised, I assure you. There has to be some way to get these students interested in education. And there's some, there has to be some way to get the teachers more involved to make one unit. Am I making sense or not? Okay. Okie dokie. Now, I'm an outsider here. I've, only, I've been married to one of you people for a number of years. Catherine, that is. <laughs> now, I'm off the Latin school now. I'm just going to wing it from here in, okay? So, a guy by the name of Frank Summerkamp 
you may know him. I'm sorry I ever met the guy. <laughs> anyway, one day he came to me and said, Oakley, I want you to go to a, an event in Summit Hills Country Club. I said, what's the, what's the deal? He said, there's a lot of nice Catholics there. I said, the hell with the Catholics. One's enough for me. <laughs> That evening, I met Sister Margaret. She was the interim president at that time. We got along great. She's a terrific female, I'll tell you. So sometime later, she'd write me a note. I'd have my wife to respond. My, my writing is terrible. But anyway, from that meeting, that's how I become involved with you people, quite frankly. That doesn't sound right, you people, because there was a politician addressing a colored group, and he said, you people. Now, we'll forget that. That bad business. But let me rephrase that, you folks. <laughs> anyway, time goes by. If I'm warning you, you speak up, and I'll just quit. <clears throat> time goes by, and I get an invitation from Sister Margaret to attend a luncheon at Thomas More. I had never been to Thomas More. Fine. So when I arrived with Sister Margaret's assistant, she took me to this small room. I think there was eight people sitting around a table. Wonderful arrangement of food. One chair was vacant at the head of the table. And I thought to myself, these people are trying to set me up. <laughs> so I immediately said, folks, I know you didn't invite me here for my personality, but I must tell you, my pot is run dry. But you can do something for me. At that luncheon, I was able to get Thomas Moore to send, at that time, 12 of their honor students to the 6th District School in Covington as mentors. Today, I do believe there's 20 of those students going to 6th District School. Ma'am, you are not smiling. <laughs> but anyway, I tried the same thing on NKU. Unfortunately, I didn't have the same good luck. But I kept hammering at that dean at the time. And they finally sent some students, but not like Thomas Moore. I'm running out of steam. Okay. Sometimes when you're speak, speaking in front of a large group, what you want to say comes out differently than what you want. At this one event, I was trying to suck up to the crowd, and I was going to say, we have the cream of the crop of northern Kentucky. Instead, it came out. We have the king of the cops of northern Kentucky. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it, but that's how it came out. I, I'm, 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 I'm getting better now. <laughs> so anyway, I, this is my last comment. Uh, several years ago, we had a real popular mayor here in Covington. His name was Butch Cowery. And invariably, when he would get up to address the crowd, he would say, My name is Bird Cowery, and I'm the mayor of Covington, Kentucky. And I've always wanted to say that in front of the crowd. <laughs> so tonight, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is not Bird Cowery, and I am not Mayor of Covington. <laughs> You leave the room. Please drop your money in the little box on the right hand side. <laughs>